once again, we end up doing this on a Wednesday because uh, on Monday, I lost my wallet for the first time since high school. That sucks. There, there is, is a surreal panic that goes into losing your wallet or your purse or whatever you keep all your money and your ID into. Because it, it's so weird. It's like, you must have this thing, but you don't. But you must, yeah. but you don't. And I went back to all, called the stores I was at. I couldn't call the park because, you know, if I dropped it at the park, well, what am I going to do? Call a squirrel? I don't, I don't exactly know how that's going to work. Um, but then, so I couldn't find it, which meant canceling all my cards and putting on a credit freeze because my social security card was in there too. And I had to get a new uh, driver's license and put in an application for a new social security card. Get all my cards replaced, blah, 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 blah. We. It's although I was I was thinking it's kind of nice now that like if, if this had been like 20 years ago and I lost my wallet, I would have lost a whole bunch of important photos that you could never get back. Yeah. But now it's like that. Nah, nice. It's in the cloud. You're fine. Like what we found out after my dad passed away and even my mom didn't know this, but we we were going through his wallet and he had carried a lock of my mother's hair in his wallet. I did pretty not much have since like they that. got married. I didn't have anything like that. I lost my gas card. That's that's not the same thing. I, it's, it's no, it's not the I like I, I think I got a free car wash on that. So that's that's not it's not not the same sort of. Good Lord, this cat. <laughs> he is, he is, cannot be dissuaded. Hi. Look at this paw at your face. Hi. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, and then last night I couldn't, I couldn't make it because I actually saw Frank Turner live for the Yay! first time. Yes, he is an adventure. Which was. He's an adventure. Yeah. He puts on a hell of a show. Did he talk about breaking the, the uh, Guinness record? He did not. Didn't mention it. Um, a few no. weeks ago, he played something like, uh, I forget, 15 shows in 15 hours across the UK in a single, driving from record store to record. And not just like showing up, playing a song and leaving. No, a full set, like an hour at each place. Just and yes, broke and his sets like they are energetic. Yes, like they like they are bouncing all over the damn stage. He was he was crowd surfing, and I'm amazed because if you know anything about Frank Turner, a lot of his lyrics are pretty elaborate, and he sings very fast. He was crowd surfing and singing and like, like keeping yeah. up. Yeah. And you, you know what's gonna what's terrible, Tara? He's about our age. I know. And it's, 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 it's just like, how do you have the energy? I know. I was just like, dude, like, I just from standing for like five hours because there were three opening acts, my lower back was <laughs> killing me just from standing. Oh, he doesn't care. He's, and I'm watching him and his guitarist and bassist who both have fully gray hair bounce around like <laughs> pinballs. And I'm yeah. like, each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for the segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong Here? Um, where are we starting this week? Oh, yes. The audacity of this motherfucker from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Have you ever had to go to traffic court? I don't think, I think you said you never had. No. I've had to, I think once a long time ago, because of all the weirdest things, they transposed a number on my license plate between the actual license plate and typing it in the computer. Oh, God. So that meant I was driving around with a plate that didn't match anything and I got pulled over for it and everything. So I had, I had to go in and contest it. No, it's like you screwed up, not me screwed up. And even then, I was like, very, you know, I'm like, here's my information. Da, 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 da. Try to be professional about it, even though I was like, what, 20 something. Um, 
this the this motherfucker just 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 playing it fast and loose, hanging out, nobody's big. Uh judge dumbfounded by man with suspended license joining court zoom call while driving man with suspended license joined his zoom court zoom call while driving astonishing the judge and his legal team <laughs> the trial which took place at Ann Arbor Michigan on May 15th surrounded a man named Corey Harris at a case involving him driving with a suspended license. After introducing himself, the assistant public defender stated that Mr. Harris should be present via Zoom, and almost on cue, Harris joined the call. Immediately, District Judge J. Cedric Simpson noticed that Harris was wearing a seatbelt and the vehicle was clearly in motion. Simpson, who was visibly astonished, then asked Harris if he was behind the wheel. Quote, actually, I'm pulling into my doctor's office, Harris said. So just give me one second. I'm barking right now. <laughs> the audacity of this motherfucker. Eventually, the bemused judge threw his pen on the table, put one hand on his face, and asked Harris if he was stationary. He was not. <laughs> like, do you know what you're here for, sir? <laughs> like, honestly, no matter what you're in court for, <laughs> showing up to your online court appointment while driving yes. is pretty fucking stupid yeah. because that's against the law. Yeah. When it's a driving violation... Yeah. Just look at this judge's face. <laughs> and I don't even like the 400 people in the chat have had to inform you that there's some update to this story. Oh. I don't understand what the update was. I don't know. The. Yeah, the judge is just like. All right, what? Yeah. You're that stupid? Upon parking, Harris's legal team requested an adjournment of the case for four weeks. Judge Simpson wasn't having it. Okay, so maybe I don't understand something, the judge said. This is a driving while license suspended case, and he was just driving, and he didn't have a license. Apparently, the update is he actually never had a driving license. So oh. It wasn't suspended. He just never had one. Oh, okay. That's, that's, um, well, okay. Yeah, he wasn't guilty of driving on a suspended license. That's true. So that, uh, that, he's not guilty of that. Yes, that's true. That is correct. He's not guilty of <laughs> I mean, <laughs> That's true. Like, technically, he is not guilty. Technically, he was not guilty. Of the of... thing he was accused of. Like, <laughs> that's kind of on the cop for charging him with the wrong thing. But I feel like you're not going to get away with it. Speaking of you're not going to get away with it, I don't know where people find the time. Have you? Quite often, we have many issues in America and they're like, you should contact your congressman. And and your your representative and your senator, I'm like, where do you have the time to to talk to to where where? Well, this guy didn't just have the time. He made a, a like, well, it's not a career if you do it for free. He made like a a hobby out of it, I suppose. Holy shit, man, who made twelve? thousand harassing phone calls to congress admits threatening staffer quote i will kill you i am going to run you over i will kill you with a bomb or grenade uh ade salam lily salim ade salim lily admitted telling one congressional staffer 
35-year-old Queens, New York man pleaded guilty Thursday to threatening to kill a congressional staff me member after making more than 12,000 harassing phone calls to members of Congress in less than two years. Uh, he pleaded guilty to threatening to kidnap or injure someone on interstate commerce as well as making repeatedly has harassing phone calls. The 12,000 plus calls, more than 6,526 of which were targeted uh, congressional offices in Washington, C Washington D.C. and were made to offices of 54 members of Congress from February 2022 to November 2023. Uh, U.S. Capitol Police spokesman who said he could not identify individual targets told NBC News that the calls targeted both political parties. So, you know, he's bipartisan in threatening okay. to kill everybody. That that's That's nice. You know, bringing people together in death threats. That's, uh, that's, uh, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Um, Lily has been custody since arrest, pleaded guilty before U.S. District Court uh, Judge Timothy Kelly set a sentencing he he hearing for August 28th. Again, we're missing <sighs> the why. <sighs> Like, are are you just bored? Like, really? Is is it like they have no choice? Are you just but... mad because you live in Queens and it takes two hours to drive three blocks? <laughs> What's the problem, sir? Shame. How can we fucking um, help you? I I think is it just like it's like they have no choice but to deal with you is the thing. Yeah, it, that, that's one of the people are like. It's like in real life, most people just like get the fuck away from me and they leave. But here is this magical place where you pick up your phone and they have to contend with your ass. They it's have kind of no like customer choice. service. Yeah. And except that some of them are interns, so they literally don't even get the slave wages that customer service gets. Nope. They're, they're what, pages or inter or what, what the fuck they call them? Congressional staffers Intern. or whatever. Yeah. Like it. They have to listen to me. I can do whatever the fuck I want. No, you can't. It's the yeah. U.S. Congress. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say they have a pretty good idea who you are. When you call them 100 times, when you call them 50 times, 25 times, 12,000 phone calls. I haven't made... I have not made that many phone calls in my entire life. Yeah. Like, you have to drag me with wild horses to make one phone call now. And you know what actually kills me? He's 35. Yeah. How many 35-year-olds do you know that want to be on the phone at fucking all? Like, if he was, like, 60 or something, I'd be like, yeah, that checks out. Right. Like, and anybody who came of age... In or around texting doesn't want to talk on the phone at fucking nope. all. If there's an online option, we will take it. If we can get around having to talk to a human, fantastic. Shit, I grew we grew up in a time when there was shit such as long distance charges, where you had yeah. it was like five sec five cents a minute or so or like more than that. You remember probably. having to worry about how many minutes you had on your cell phone plan left? Right. It, it, that, that was the only way we communicate like, with each other. We would we would spend like we were all spread unlimited out. Unlimited calling is like maybe 20, maybe 15, 20 years old. It used to be like you had a certain number of mm -hmm. minutes you could use. And then you were paying like five dollars a minute for every call after that. And we were spread out all the over the country in our in our LARP group, so we were always on the phone mm -hmm. for like hours with each other. And then we didn't have to do that anymore because all the phone calls were free. You know, what we did we stopped fucking calling each other. We just we but all went to text. Yeah. So that's what amazes me that any thirty five year old person mm -hmm. wants to be on the fucking phone that much. <laughs> I'm going to I I'm going to say for this next story two words that you never want to hear ever. This is part of the weird this week. And those two words are meat spill. 
Meat spill blocks northbound lanes of I-880 in Oakland. Four crashes, three involving cars and one involving a motorcycle were attributed to slippery condition. No injuries, which is nice. Meat spilled onto Interstate 880 in Oakland on Friday, fouling the afternoon commute and causing four crashes. The incident happened around 4.45 p.m. Northbound lane just south of 29th Avenue, an unsecured load of what appeared to be chicken meat fell off a truck and splattered. I love that. He, the Jason Green, I love it, splattered across the freeway. Uh, California Highway Patrol Officer uh, Adib Zeed said the slippery conditions caused four crashes, three involving cars, one involving a motorcycle. No injuries were reported. All lanes of the interstate were initially blocked. California Highway Patrol opened the far right lane to ease the backup. Now, if you're thinking, what, what, what it couldn't have been that bad, I've got to, I had to go to another story to get a picture. And I did I, another, you know, another. I'm just thinking about the motorcyclist. Because, <laughs> like, at least the car is like, all right, your tires are gross, but you're inside a car. <laughs> Motorcycles, if they're not in active motion, they fall over, Tara, and you're not inside anything. Tara, do you want to see how bad this was? Do you want to see how bad this was? No. We are going to. But yes. Yes. Look at that shit. Oh, they're plowing it with a snow plow. <laughs> <laughs> Is, have you ever seen the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? I have. I honestly, actually, that that's weird. Weirdly enough, I have seen that film. That movie. I don't understand how that's a children's movie because it is a nightmare fever dream to me. Like I watched it with my nephew when he was nine. And by the time we got to the giant anus in the sky that was <laughs> pooping food, I was like, are you not freaked out by this? <laughs> are you? Oh. This is what kids movies are now. This is freaking me out. But it, it, that's what it reminds me oh, of. Oh, Mr. Plow. That's my name. My name again is Mr. Plow. <laughs> Some of the channels like the, the cats in that neighborhood. This was like like a high holy day for them. Like th this is this this was manna from heaven. Only it's chicken. For about three hours. <laughs> and then the sun. Well, maybe if it was hot enough on the asphalt, it would just cook it. The cats don't care. They care if it's rotted. Well, it's, it doesn't rot that fast. In California sun? Well, it would cook. You're right. It was. It's. It's asphalt. It's yeah. the sun. It's. It's. You get. You get. Oven roasted. Tara, everything freaks you out. That is not true. <laughs> But that movie is fucked up. Meowna from heaven. Oh, oh, that's terrible. No, this is this is going to be yeah, a all they really needed to break, do was bring in a bunch of buzzards or something. <sighs> but that cleaned up in an hour. How do you react? I have I they, they taught us. I just the poor motorcyclist, dude. <laughs> You're covered in dead chicken. <laughs> You're covered in chicken guts. Just spray. The, there, the, you know there are juices out there. There were juices. Yeah. Liquids. Unpleasant. And some poor motorcyclist had to roll in it. <laughs> that like if the crashes and the helmet and all the stuff don't get you to stop driving a motorcycle, riding around through chicken might be the one thing that you know, you know, maybe I should get a scion. Maybe. <laughs> and literally, like, more often than not, I see people on motorcycles in, like, short sleeve T-shirts and no helmet. More often than I see people on motorcycles with helmet and proper gear. So, like, ew. I, they, they tell us what to do for snow, for rain, for hydro. Is it chicken planing? Is that how it works? Actually, it would be v blood planing, maybe. Ugh. 
horrid. They should have just... Some really terrible person should have just been like, holy shit, the rapture went real wrong. <laughs> like they started the rapture and then they canceled it halfway through. <laughs> Do not drive today. Uh, oh, all right, we're going to move on to a more horrible story now. God. Damn this motherfucker. I'm not, I don't like you. Fuck you. I don't like you. There are certain people who you would think early in their careers would realize, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm not good at this. This, this isn't me. I, I don't feel good about this profession. This is one of those people who don't come to that realization and they goddamn well should have. And the fact that this isn't the first time this sort of thing has happened is just so irritating on many levels. Massachusetts teacher on leave after holding mock slave auction and using racial slur. We've had so many of these. A fifth grade teacher that's 10 and 11 years old in America has been placed on paid leave. Paid leave? After a series of incidents, including holding a mock slave auction, using a racial slur, and, cherry on top, calling out the student who reported the slur. Fifth grade student, uh, teacher in Massachusetts, been placed on paid leave after a series of incidents, including holding a mock slave auction, etc. Officers did not name the teacher. They should have. District Name super, that motherfucker. District Superintendent, uh, su District Superintendent, Super Nintendo Chalmers, District Superintendent Gregory Martineau, told parents in a Martineau. statement. Martineau. Martineau. In a statement this week that he first learned about the incidents uh, from parents in April, he said the first incident, a mock slave auction took place in January during a history lesson on the economy of the Southern colonies. Educator asked two children sitting in front of the room, who were of color to stand and the educator and the class discussed physical attributes, i.e. teeth and strength. Now let's just say there's some way to make this palatable. And that would have probably been not, it's not a great idea under any circumstances, but I would have picked maybe a couple white kids. To get the point across that it's dehumanizing and horrific and it, I, I could, but no, no, two black kids. So that's all. We're already off to a great start here in the second incident. And this is the one that's just making me go because the first thing I thought of was, was he reading Huck Finn? That's always the right. book you think of with the slur. Because like every third word in Huck Finn is the N word. Yeah. In the second incident in April, the teacher was reading aloud from a book and used a slur, which the district later discovered does not appear in the book. So not Huck Finn then. So he just, he, pride and prejudice and N-word? Was that was, what was happening here? I think that's a little above fifth grade. Choose your own slur? Was that how it, you know? Dr. Seuss got weird, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, the superintendent said the parents had a chance to meet with the teacher and the principal to learn more about the two incidents. What did you need to learn? The school is seeking to be transparent. But the next day, the educator inappropriately called out the student who had reported the educator's use of the racial slur, which is not acceptable. Oh, that's not acceptable. The other shit. You imagine was, you are ten. You are ten years old. Uh huh. So like adults can be very intimidating, especially when you, they're mm -hmm. your teacher. Yeah. Not to every ten year old, but to a lot of ten year olds. It, it, your teacher does some inappropriate shit, and you actually are brave enough as a ten year old to say something about it. And then you go to school the next day and your teacher fucking reams you. Like, fuck you, man. 
Fuck you. He said all personal ma- personnel matters would remain confidential. Well, fuck you too. Superintendent Chalmers. <sighs> fuck this guy. Just the, the, the mocks motherfucking st- why? In what realm in your brain did this seem like a good plan? I mean, it's 30 miles west of Boston, so that tracks. But how did how did you seem like, okay, this is like, the best idea I've ever had. Some of y'all how are going to be mad happen? at me saying this, but Boston's a pretty fucking racist town, mm. unless you're Big Poppy. But how, how did, how did it, how the fuck? the fuck also like is this a new teacher well, I, I I I don't know because if not this probably isn't the first time this, this probably has happened isn't the first time this has happened <sighs> fucking motherfucker but wait speaking of terrible ideas and utter audacity so we we were all like we just had a case in the news and we were all concerned about someone fucking with the jury. I don't know what case I could possibly mm-hmm. re- be referring to. Maybe one that has historic implications for the entire United States of America, but we were just like the entire country and and it was really dumb how they were fucking with the jury. They're still trying to dox them. And, and you you think to yourself it couldn't be any, you couldn't get any stupider than that. Wrong. Wrong. You can, in fact, get stupider. <sighs> Juror says someone left her bag with $120,000 in cash and promise of more if she'll acquit. She was serving a case involving seven people charged with stealing more than $40 million from a program meant to feed children during the pandemic. (sighs) Juror was dismissed Monday after reporting that a woman dropped a bag of $120,000 in cash at her home and offer her more if she would vote to acquit seven people charged with stealing more than $40 million for a program meant to feed children during the pandemic. Uh, there, these seven are the first of 70 defendants expected to go on trial in a conspiracy that cost taxpayers $250 million. 18 others have pled guilty. Authorities said they recovered about 50 million for, in one of the nation's largest pandemic related fraud cases. Prosecutors say a fraction of the money went to feed low income kids and the rest went to luxury cars, jewelry, travel, and property. During the trial began in April, defense attorneys questioned the quality of the FBI's investigation and suggested this might be more of a case of record-keeping problems than fraud. Well, then, 23-year-old juror said she immediately turned over the bag of cash to police, so a woman left it with her father-in-law on Sunday with the message she'd get another bag if she voted to acquit. See, I don't know. There's this weird set of people. Weirdly enough, also related to the other case that happened this week. That go through life thinking everyone is just as corrupt and fucking criminal Mm -hmm. as they are. That there is no such thing as honest fucking people. Did I actually give you the story? Did it go through? You did not. It did not. There it is. Um, Yeah, they go through life. You were on a roll. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, you didn't want to interrupt. Yeah. They go through life thinking everybody is just as corrupt as they are, and they think, well, we just give them 120 grand, which is low. Bar. Oh, shit. Wow. That popped in there. That, that's that, that's Yeah, because you stole 40 mil. 40 mil, and you're lowballing them. By the way, 120 grand after 40. Mm, no, no. It's, 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 We're talking seven digits to start. <laughs> Well, first, I mean, I would not just for the simple fact of these dumb motherfuckers, even if I was corrupt enough to be like, I'll think about that. But these dumb motherfuckers 
who just dropped it off, like have probably left a right. fucking trail that yeah. will lead right back to my ass because they're bad also, at crime. Is that money from the money they stole? Possibly. Could be. Are you now taking money that was supposed to feed children? Receiving stolen goods. Yay. Because also, like I'm, like if they're pleading not guilty and hoping for an acquittal, then paying off with a big bag of money that's from what you stole is basically a confession. Um, she's ordered the FBI to confiscate the defendant's phones. Um, then decide immediately whether to detain the defendants. I mean, if you wanted to, oh, again, the, the jury has just been sequestered, which is going to make them love your ass. Yeah. So the other 17 jurors and alternates none reporting unauthorized contact. It's, it's, the the, the ham fistedness of it. That's what's what's just a literal bag of money. Just whoop, there you go. Remember to acquit. We'll give you some more later. Ciao. And I'm not even talking to her, to her father-in-law, which is great. You're involving more people in a criminal fucking yeah. conspiracy. You are so bad at crime. How did you get away with stealing 250 million? Well, there's a whole bunch of you. That's well, how. you didn't. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't get away with it. They, they, they kind of, they, they, they fucked it all up. Last one this week. We like to think. And I don't know how we do it these days, but just on instinct, we like to believe in this world that there are grownups, that there are people who, 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 who are supposed to handle things as grownups, especially confl conflicts with other states. Like we, we don't, we think of the conflict between North Korea and South Korea as bullets and 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 tanks and missiles poised at one another we don't think of it as giant balloons full of shit i didn't hear about the shit part north korea sends fleets of balloons carrying excrement to south korea north korea sent a fleet of balloons carrying excrement and trash into South Korea. As already warned as by the North Korean Vice Minister of National Defense, a large amount of waste paper and rubbish, rubbish are being scattered in the border and deep areas of the Republic of Korea from the night of May 28th. It's a statement from the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's sister, Kim Yo-jong. Uh, according to the South Korean me uh, media, waste paper and rubbish were found not only in the border in North Korea, but blah, 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 blah. According to the Associated Press, South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff said the North has been sending balloons carrying trash in the direction of the South beginning Tuesday, responding to activists from South Korea sending anti-Northern leaflets over the border. All right. The leaflets kind of make sense. It's, it's a nonviolent action to prompt a response from the, the, the populace. Okay. But, like, can you imagine, you, you, you're in North Korea, it's already fucking North Korea, and someone knocks on your door and says, dear leader needs you to poop in a bag. What? 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 For the revolution. What? You know, is it? What? Also... How did you get that stuff inside the balloons? I'm, I'm probably sure they, they're like tied it to the, there's like a bag floating on the bottom of the balloon. It's not like a water balloon full of poop. It's like, it's like a balloon went oh. up with like a little package at the bottom and it's poop. Just, it's well, like, like the little parachutes in the Hunger Games. Yeah, only it's shit. It's <laughs> actual shit. <laughs> Yeah. 99 shit balloons. <laughs> 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 
dun, 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 dun. With that, with the, it's, it's 99 shit. Because that's the story of that song is 99 balloons for peace accidentally set off a nuclear war. 99 ba balloons of shit setting off. That that would be that would just be the perfect capstone to the human race, right there. Yeah. Why on that would be weirdly fitting. Why of all some the... alien somewhere is like, how did they how did they destroy themselves? Balloons full of poop. Like you have I sw I swear I keep hearing about how Kim Jong un wants to be taken seriously as a leader on the world stage. And at the same time, they're they're just floating balloons full of shit toward their adversaries. This man once said, my days of not taking you seriously are coming to a middle. I mean, is it an urban legend or is it true that because I heard somewhere that during World War Two. We were airdropping like packages of giant like extra large condoms accidentally behind german lines as like a psyop i i don't i don't know but that would probably work it's the kind of thing america would do why on the why in the of why would of all of the possible tactics you could have set your own leaflets you could you could have just let it go like this is some pet this is like li quite literally this is some petulant shit like uh, no not you know, why oh, cold war okay it was a cold war thing oh, okay well it's... but apparently it, it is true Okay, so we were, well, okay, well, we weren't officially childish, I'll put it that way. And it just cracks me up a little bit because, like, the implication of that. Men, men, you're just not okay. No, no, we're not. Because imagine you're in a fucking foxhole. You're <laughs> at war. And the idea that, oh, my God, the people in the other army have big dicks is actually going to demoralize you. <laughs> Because we don't do these things without research. We don't spend that kind of money. Well, so Tara, just, you say that. Fellas, therapy, therapy's okay. You say that, but North Korea just sent a bunch of balloons full of with, with shit to South Korea. I don't yeah. think they focus group that one, Tara. Well, no, but I'm saying like, the American military, the British military, like they're not just doing stuff without. Well, apparently, they might have been. They actually might have been. We're you the, 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 like to think the grown-ups are not in charge. I think it's the first thing we learned this week. The fucking yeah. grown-ups are not in fucking charge. Uh, we learned that if you're a juror. Rural juror on a, on a, on a case, and uh, that they the about you know corruption and and embezzlement, and a bag of money shows up at your door. It's probably a good indicator that uh, they're they, probably guilty. They're probably guilty. But you know, you're off the case, but still, Jesus. Um. We've learned. We've, yeah, good news is you're out of jury duty. We've learned that if you try to do the right thing as a 10 year old, sometimes your shitbag of a teacher will try to call you out on it. And kids, let me tell you, you shouldn't be watching this, by the way. But kids, if you are watching, fuck that guy. Yeah, okay? if you're 10, go to bed. And also. And also, fuck the man. Fuck the man. Yes. Um, We've learned sometimes. In life, you'll be driving along the highway and suddenly there's meat. I mean, you're laughing, is but it's literally true. one of is that not literally one of Dante's levels of hell? 
Just people swimming in like flesh. <laughs> We've learned that there is a 30, there actually is a 35 year old in America today who still uses the phone. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. Go study him. And finally, if you're in court, because you weren't, you're driving without a license. Maybe don't show up on the Zoom call driving without a license. That's, I, I don't, like yeah. there, there's missing. Would, the, you, it doesn't seem like something you'd have to tell people. It doesn't. And yet. Like, like if you're on trial for murder, Try not to show up in bloody coveralls with a butcher knife. So much of this show is, and yet, that that's that's yeah. 